Hello everyone and welcome once again to another episode of Crow Conversion Rate Optimization with Wright. That's me, Jason Wright. Right? Cool. Awesome. So today we're going to talk about BlackRock. And this is one of my favorite brands uh, on the planet right now. Uh, not just because of their, you know, delicious drinks, obviously, uh, but just because their brand, their people, who they hire, their culture, uh, no matter what location you go to, uh, you always feel welcomed, it feels inclusive, and it just feels a, like a really great overall experience, and it's cohesive across the board, and they continue to spread across the United States. So today, we're here to talk about what we could do to improve the experience of this site, and you might be thinking, well, this is pretty good overall, like, what do you... What are you expecting here? Well, there's a few things. They recently added e-commerce experiences to their site, and um, that gives us the opportunity to, uh, you know, uh, look at ways of op optimizing that experience. So let's take a look at what we got. We got a little call to action here at the top, offering free shipping. Okay. Got a little menu, shop, subscriptions, logo, profile, cart. Subscribe and save. Hmm. Coffee delivered to your door. Can't live without BlackRock Coffee. Start your subscription. Interesting. So we got some different products here. Got apparel, things you can buy. Fun little animated graphic here for the app. Little community section. Another photo, footer, and newsletter. Okay. I'm curious. Let's see what start subscription says. Choose. So one thing I find kind of curious here, and this would be great to test inside of something like Google Optimize, is understanding, you know, how displaying pricing might affect conversions. So right now you're requiring me to take an extra click. I'm assuming. So let's just pick Old Town. Uh, let's do ground. So they don't want to show pricing because they have this whole wizard. So that makes sense. And you go through and you end up with this. So this is actually very, very clean. Um, unfortunately, that language there could probably be changed because you're not really subscribing yet. Um, I would probably just change that language to check out. And... Well, because we're looking at cart, it should probably just say, oh man, there's another pop-up. Uh, it should probably just say view cart or go to cart, right? Oh, we got to start over now. Uh, that's that's kind of tough. So let's go steel bridge, hole, 12, every week. Okay. So yeah, this should say um, add to cart. So clicking on that goes add to cart. Boom, brings you shopping cart. Now this this language makes more sense, right? Update cart, check out, keep shopping. So go check out. Okay, pretty clean. It's a funnel page or a landing page. So they're forcing you into making the purchase. They removed all the navigation. Of course, that's not totally intentional because uh, in reality, they're just sending you to a third party app to fill in this information and complete the transaction. So that makes sense. Okay, let's go back to their homepage. Let's look for some opportunities. So there's some there's some opportunity in terms of the checkout process that we just uncovered, which would be great. The few main things that I, I thought that stuck out to me were how things are being highlighted on the page. So, you know, we've got top navigation, logo, um, all that good stuff. I don't know that this yellow necessarily goes with their brand. Maybe it is a brand color. It doesn't seem to fit with the rest of the scheme of their site. I mean, it is here, so maybe it is a core component and they're kind of wanting you to buy a steel bridge. And that's something to think about, right? Like, you know, subconsciously you're sending signals. You've got this orange and red, and so your brain is going to be connected to that orange and red as you're scrolling. Because the photo here is is kind of, you know, orange, reddish. Uh, because you got a sunset, you've got red, red. So now my eyes are looking for red, and I'm focused on this one. And you've got steel bridge, you got yellow, yellow, uh, red, red. So um, what's funny is a lot of these colors aren't necessarily present in 
their actual branding on physical materials, at least not the ones that I've seen or inside menus and things like that. So, um, you know, these are colors that they're specifically using on the site to help segment sections um, of these, these areas to help draw your attention. Now, the main thing that I notice here is, you know, because they are a big brand, they don't have to spend so much time saying, we're an awesome brand. Um, they just already are. They've, they are established now. It's not the same as a local dentist or a lawyer where you have to have, you know, a very clear, unique value proposition upon arriving, your calls to action. So it's a little bit different. This is sort of a big brand uh, thing at this point. So my thought here is, you know, fuel your, fuel your story is um, a slogan that they have. It works great. Uh, I love it. It also ties into their product, which is fuel, which is an energy drink that uh, is proprietary to them. So there's there's some cross meaning with that, and that makes sense. The photo itself, um, you know, there's probably intent in terms of maybe highlighting recent locations or best photos. There might be something associated with that, but honestly, yeah, you know, this should be premium level photography. Now, 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 don't get me wrong. This is a nice photo. Okay, that that's there's no judgment there. Um, the, my main thought is like, you know, show us a steaming cup of coffee, right? Sitting on the counter with a bokeh out background, uh, show us a couple cans of fuel cycle through, uh, maybe some close-ups of these interactions, right? Uh, to get that feeling, some inside photos, uh, to deliver that feeling, really drive that experience home, right? You really want to, you want to, give people the impression of, you know, who you are, uh, what your product looks like, uh, because right now I don't know what it looks like. And, you know, it's not always such a big deal. Like, you know, he, people are, are looking for this and looking for coffee shops and whatnot, but you know, that they're not really going to be hitting your site all the time. Uh, but people who are researching you, maybe they've always got a Dutch brothers and like, you know what? Black rocks all over the place. Let me just look at their site real quick. Well, if they're looking at your site, uh, you want them to get that fe that coffee feeling, right? Yeah, they've never been. You want them to become a customer because if you take, you know, a customer that goes four days a week at six dollars uh, per drink, it's twenty four hour twenty four dollars. Uh, six times four is twenty four, right? Uh, math, yeah. So six times four is twenty four. You got twenty four dollars a week times four weeks is. Uh, uh, that's 48, uh, you know what, we're going to use the calculator. So, uh, 24 times four, that's $96, 96, uh, 96, 96, we can do this, 96 times 12. Uh, okay, so that's eleven hundred dollars a year on coffee. <laughs> Is your potentially your average customer value? So, um, you know, getting that one customer who's like, yeah, I've gone to Starbucks my whole life, but I just feel like I need something different. Hit them with coffee images right up, right up front. Give the feeling, uh, and and drive that home, and then utilize the space a little bit better. So the next piece of this is. It, it will we'll go with the understanding that the subscription service is something that they really want to push. So uh, I would I would alter some of the layout here, meaning that I might try and squeeze some things together uh, to condense the space. Though I like the whole effect that they have here. What's interesting is I read subscribe and save first, but really I should read the benefit first coffee delivered to your door. So I feel like this header should be above this one. And uh, I feel like, you know, the rest of this is fine, but it can be tightened up. It can be not as wide. And so if I shrink this down, you know, this, this makes a little bit more sense. Uh, but, you know, it just feels like too spaced, uh, too much, too much air. Uh, but, you know, when it's a smaller screen, these stack nicely. When it's a wider screen, feels kind of funky. The other thing is, uh, there should be some buy buttons in here. You know, like, if I don't hover and don't move my mouse, these just look like pictures, right? I don't really necessarily know without digging that uh, this requires you to take another action. 
So, you know, having a, a view product details would be great. Uh, you could have like view product detail. You could have an add to cart or a subscribe button, right? That'd even be better. Subscribe or view product details as a text text link. That gives you a little bit more context, and it uh, can can get the user to take action without really digging into more of the content or going into somewhere they shouldn't. Because right, these detail pages are pretty pretty decent. They're clear, concise, makes sense. It'd be nice to have reviews on here at some point if they get them. But uh, you know, it it makes it makes sense. So a button there for subscription or buying or something like that, along with a view details link would be very helpful. The rest of the stuff is kind of not as important. And the reason for that is because, or the reason why I believe that is because you want people to really get the sense that you produce great coffee and great experiences. So delivering that in the image is sort of the most critical piece of this. Um, you're not going to, you know, you're not you're not really gonna uh, take very many other actions on the site aside from maybe looking at locations or going to menu. And they've got a map there, so that works fine. You know, their menu is here, so this is this works fine. Um, you know, it'd be nice to have prices here and whatnot, but there's a lot of things that factor into that. You know, like what size are you getting? Um, here you got little little pop-ups and stuff, which you know, it's okay. Um, if we just take out, take a look at mobile here. Let's turn that on. Let's hit refresh. Okay, so you know we got some. I got pop-ups displaying here, which uh, is probably just rendering issue. But uh, this menu feels like it could be centered in here, away from the logo a little bit, or maybe this use an alternate logo. Uh, but let's tap on this. So we're using pop-ups here still. Uh, not not too bad, uh, but you know you could do more there. You you might even just include the images. They have some great photography that they are uh, not photography, but some graphics they produce, and um, those would be great alternatives to put into these uh, menu spaces because you get a lot more detail there. These pop-ups are super annoying. Uh, there should be a timer on that. If you say no thanks, it should just not show again. That's another user experience thing to consider. There's a login. The only other thing I would say is that, uh, you know, you might put, I think it'd be highly effective to take this shop out of here and make it a nice big white button over here. So um, I can't really, I can't really draw on here, um, but, you know, putting a nice white button right here that says shop online. That's a nice, clear call to action. And I bet you that would get more visibility. Uh, again, with conversion rate optimization, it's very tricky. And you want to make changes one step at a time. So in other words, you know, run a Google optimized test, swap this photo. That's it. Run a test. See how that performs. I bet you a photo of some delicious coffee steaming would and you know would result in more conversion overall um, through through uh, these products, a subscription service, and through just in in store, we'll call it in store per, um, purchases. Which that's a whole other thing that's very, you know, difficult to try and track. But um, you could probably do that through geo targeting specific optimized changes, uh, for example. And then another test separately from that. Say you swap the photo now, and that you've tested that new photo works best. Okay, let's test a button. Add shop online button. That's white. Cut this one out of here and see how that performs. I bet again that that could increase conversion. And all these things, even if they increase conversion by a very small fraction, you know, like a 0.1 or one tenth of a, a full conversion point percentage, um, that could make all the difference in the world. That could that can make a huge, huge difference because it's all of these micro adjustments over time that really scale. Uh, your conversion. And if you're trying to push subscriptions, then, you know, highlighting uh, shop online would be great. And when you land there, your subscription, uh, you know, becomes the main piece. So, you know, there's some different optimization things get, that can be done uh, because, you know, you might have a shop online button that takes you to a whole other screen that's maybe a 50-50 split and one, one side says subscribe or just browse products. 
and if it's browse products, it can just smooth scroll them down to like this section. But if it's subscribe, it takes them through uh, this process, right? Um, and that and and that can help scale sales on this site. So it's about funneling users because a subscription uh, almost reads like a magazine subscription, but it's a product purchase. So I think combining these two into shop online and then designing a section where these two product uh, lines are separated or these two purchase routes are separated and helping the customer understand that journey through a single page is a really great way to go. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Again, my name is Jason Wright. You've been watching Crow. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please like and subscribe to see more of these videos in the future, and I will see you again next time.